Are you thinking about getting into beat making? Well, most producers make the mistake of purchasing way, way too much gear than they actually need in order to get started. By watching this video, you'll be able to avoid the number one bank account emptying mistake that most producers make before they ever get started creating beats. By watching this video, I'm going to show you my five tools, the only five tools that you need to get started making quality music. Uh, by the end of this video, you'll understand why I think it's so important to start your home studio small and then slowly build your gear up over time. I'm Rob, the creator of Machine, the Hip Hop Beat Maker's Missing Manual. You can go ahead and download my free book that's meant for machine beat makers who are just getting started by uh, entering your, in your email, um, which is going to, the email box is going to pop up above my face after I'm done talking right here, and then press submit. And uh, after you've submitted your email, I'll send you a confirmation email so that you can get your free ebook. So in the first part of this video, guys, I'm going to start by talking about the problem with the idea of starting off with too much gear in the beginning, uh, what I call gear lust. Um, and then I'm going to show you the exact five pieces of equipment or things that you need in order to get started. And then later on in this video, I'm going to go on and show you a little bit um, of the extra stuff that you can start purchasing later. If you're an intermediate person or um, you know, you've been making beats for a while, you might want to think about purchasing some more things to expand your studio. And I'm going to show you exactly the things that you might want to purchase as a more intermediate beat maker. But first, um, let's talk about this idea um, that I define as gear lust. Okay. Now I understand the reasons why you want to purchase a lot of gear. You've seen pictures and you know YouTube videos of producers that you admire. Their studios are decked out with you know thousands of dollars worth of gear. They have the expensive speakers, the you know the hardware processors, the cool studio desks, the you know nice speakers, the acoustic treatments and stuff. And you can't help but start thinking that you need all that stuff in order to make good music. But it's a mistake. Gear loss is the mistake that most beginners make, including me. Uh, you know, I'm included in this criticism. I had gear lust in the beginning as well. We all start thinking that by purchasing the pro gear, we'll be able to make the same music as the pros. But in reality, in the beginning, you don't have any experience or any knowledge. Um, you don't have the knowledge needed to operate any of this stuff. Um, and like you, I, I had at least $2,000, if not more, worth of gear picked out on eBay before I started making beats way back then. Mainly because I didn't know any better. I assume that because that's what the professional guys had, that that's what I needed. Um, it's not easy learning this new skill, but you only make it harder on yourself by forcing yourself to learn eight new pieces of gear at once instead of just focusing on mastering one thing at a time. Okay, So if I had to do everything over again, I would focus on one thing, and that would be learning machine. I wouldn't be focusing on trying to learn a DAW at the same time or how to record... Um, you know, get the best vocal quality on my recordings and my microphone. I wouldn't be learning about how to set up acoustic treatments properly in the room. I wouldn't learn about, you know, all this other extra stuff. And that's the problem that you get by purchasing too much gear in the beginning. You're increasing the difficulty of that learning curve because you're trying to grasp so many different things at one time. You're spreading your focus too thin in too many different areas. As they say, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. In the beginning, it's my opinion that you want to master one thing. And in my case, it's machine. You know, if you're an owner of Ableton or Logic or whatever, master that one tool first and then go on to other things. So let's start by just talking about the equipment that you need in order to get started with. Save your money, save your money in the beginning by starting small and just slowly growing your studio as you gain more experience. So I'm gonna to talk to you quickly about the things that you need in order to get started. Um, the first thing is a computer. Now, because today we make music using software, um, you know, in the case of machine, it's software based. The case of Logic, of Ableton, of Pro Tools, of whatever reason, everything is based around the center of your recording studio, which is your computer. If you have an old, slow computer, your whole setup is essentially going to be compromised. A slow s computer won't run machine or any other DAW as quickly as it should. You're going to get hiccups and glitches while you're trying to record and make beats. So I recommend that you don't purchase anything else, you don't invest in anything else, until you have enough in your budget for a solid computer if you don't own one already. 
It doesn't necessarily matter if it's a Mac or a PC, but in order to get the most bang for your buck, I'd focus on the quality of the processor, the amount of the RAM, um, the amount of RAM that you have, um, the hard drive space that you have. Um, I'm not going to get into the technical details of all of this just because you can go talk to your local uh, you know, sales rep at Best Buy or whatever um, in order to get this information or do a little bit of research. But the three specs that you're looking for are RAM, processor, and hard drive space. Okay? And um, the, the, the computer that I own is an Apple MacBook Pro. It's like a 2011. You can get one for a relatively good price. And uh, it's really, you know, it just works. And that's that's what's important for me. You know, I've owned PCs before. I've owned laptop PCs. But, you know, my MacBook just works. And if you can afford one, it's a, it's a pretty good investment if you plan on making music your thing. Um, the next thing that you need to purchase is machine. Okay? Um, you guys already know my opinion on machine. This blog is mainly centered around machine, but this is the main tool that I use to create music. It's really the only tool that you need to make quality music in the beginning. So if you're just starting to make music, you don't need a DAW in addition to your machine. It's overkill. Um, you know, I would just recommend starting with machine in the beginning because there's so much that you're going to need to learn um, in order to really make the most out of this thing. There's an ample learning curve in machine. You're going to have to learn how to sample. You're going to have to learn basic sound design, you're going to have to learn basic mixing, you're going to have to learn uh, arrangement of tracks. You know, there's so much stuff that you can learn just within the machine environment that I would recommend just purchasing a machine in the beginning. Just because the software is quality enough to start making good tracks, the hardware is fun and intuitive, start with machine. Um, if you already own another DAW, that's another case, um, but I would just start with machine. Um, the next thing that you need are headphones. Okay, and there's some reasoning why I'm saying that you should start with a quality pair of headphones and not purchase a, you know, a huge 8-inch um, pair of studio monitors. Well, a quality pair of headphones are much cheaper and a much better option when you don't have the money to invest in an acoustically treated room. Okay, to, re to reproduce accurate sound over speakers... You first of all need quality speakers, but you also need acoustic treatment in order to make sure that what you're hearing out of these speakers is accurate. You need sound isolation pads. You need acoustically treated rooms. You need bass traps. And in order to really make a a studio with um, you know near field monitor speakers that sound good, you, it's going to cost you a few thousand bucks in order to buy all that stuff. Okay, you can't just don't make the mistake like I did of purchasing two KRKs and just throwing them on your desk. Because what you're hearing out of those KRKs in your in your crappy room, your crass, crap, a treated, crap, a crappily treated room is uh, is going to be subpar, okay? You're not going to have an accurate picture of your low end. Um, the decisions that you're making while mixing in a room that's not treated properly are going to be false. And it's going to cause you to make bad music. Okay, or music that is not as, quite as good as it could be. This is why I think it's expensive and unnecessary investments for beginners. So considering that you can get this uh, better quality, you can get more accurate sound out of a hundred pair, hundred dollar pair of headphones. I'd recommend just starting with that. Okay, hell, you can make a lot better beats with cheap earbuds. Okay, like the ones that come with your iPhone. Um, you know th those are better, in my opinion, than spending. You know, if you if you got a four thousand dollar pair of speakers and put them in a room that's not acoustically treated, your earbud speakers would be more valuable in terms of helping you make accurate mixing decisions. So that's why I recommend that as a beginner you start off with headphones. Okay, it's going to allow you to make music more easily. The next thing that you should start with are sounds. Okay, um, sounds. Sample sounds to be specific. Now, if you purchase a machine, you're going to get a huge, huge sample library to start off with. That's one of the reasons why I advocate starting with machine. You're going to have all the drums you'll need that will last you a long time. Okay, I'm still using machine sample library. Um, but you need sounds in order to build your beats. Okay, so this is the reason why I'm such an advocate of starting off with machine. The sample library that comes with it is incredible. If you plan on creating sample based music, so like hip hop beats and stuff, you're also going to need music to sample. And I'd start by using digital samples, which are MP3s, waves, and, and downloads and stuff. But the equipment that you need to sample is is pretty a hefty investment. But um, I would start with just sounds, okay? Downloads, all right? There are royalty-free samples available that you can start sampling with. You can sample off of YouTube. 
Um, there are tons of different options for sampling. Um, so I would recommend starting with some sounds. And if you start with machine, and a lot of other DAWs actually come with quality sounds stock as well. Um, the next thing I would recommend are VSTs. And I'm going to link this article up below. Um, but there are some VSTs that you can use to supplement um, you know, the effects that come with machine. If you don't know what VSTs are, they're little pieces of software that are made by third-party companies that allow you to help creating in your help that, that help you create your music. So VSTs come in a few different types. There's VST instruments and VST effects. I would recommend that you start some with some free VSTs out there. Um, there are some top quality f free VSTs. And in the beginning, I'd recommend that you get your feet wet with VSTs by just downloading some free options. There's no sense in dropping a lot of money on complete ultimate in the beginning, especially when you don't even know how to use the majority of the things yet. You're not going to know how to use a compressor in the beginning. You're not going to know how to use an equalizer properly. So it doesn't make sense to go and spend thousand dollars on something that you don't even have knowledge of how to use properly. It makes more sense to start with something that's free, learn how to, how to you know, get your feet wet with that. You'll learn the basics and then you can move on to something that costs money. And by then you'll, you'll also know how to use it effectively. So as you gain more experience, you'll start to recognize the VSTs that you also like to add to your collection. Um, so that pretty much is it for the for the beginning producer. Okay, you need a quality computer, like we talked about. You need machine. You need a quality pair of headphones, and there are a bunch available. So I would recommend um, th these. These are the kind that I have. Um, they're Sennheiser HD 280 Pro headphones. I've wrote written an article about that. I'll try to link that up below as well. Um, these are okay. You know, they're a hundred dollar headphones. Um, you know, they're flat frequency response. They they sound pretty decent. Um, but you know, even you can use your earbuds that came with your iPhone if if that's what something that you own. So the headphones, the machine, the computer, some sounds. Which if you're using machine or another doll, you also have a lot of sounds that come with it. Um, and some free VSTs, which you can find in this article that I'm linking below. Okay, and that pretty much uh, takes the cake for what you need in the beginning. Um, if you go ahead and read the article that I wrote below, um, below this video, you'll be able to see the, the equipment that you can use as an intermediate and advanced producer to uh, really grow your studio. We're talking about um, you know, your external hard drive, your keyboard controller, um, studio monitors. Well, I'm going to be talking about why it's not an important decision or an important to own it right away. Talk about that acoustic treatment that you might need. Talk about audio interfaces. Save that stuff for later. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that you, as you read this article below, you'll be able to um, find out my mentality about why I think you should save this stuff for later. But um, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, so read that article. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm trying to keep this video video below 10 minutes, and it's already at 12 minutes. So I can't cover all of this stuff. But um, just know that uh, it's important to save these things for later, in my opinion. And uh, you'll find out why, but why by reading this article below. Um, also, also if you're new to making beats and uh, you're thinking about purchasing machine, or maybe you've already purchased machine. You need to download my ebook. It's called Machine, the Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual. And it's going to basically um, teach you the basics of how to get started making beats. Okay, away from all that technical jargon that's in the machine, the, the machine manual that comes with the actual piece of hardware. This breaks down in plain English the things that you need, the knowledge that you need in order to get started. We're talking about sampling, okay? Um, how to sample correctly, how to chop your samples properly, how to develop your ear for samples. Um, all this stuff is really gold. There is nothing like it on the internet, not even for sale, let alone consider the fact that I'm giving this away for free. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm a nice guy. But um, I, don't, may, I might start charging this for this soon just because the, the, the response that I've gotten from this is huge. Over 10,000 people have downloaded it already. That's how good this is. Um, also, there's a section about getting started with effects, learning how to use things like compression and distortion properly. Um, so lots and lots of good stuff. You can get this ebook after I'm done talking. There's going to be a screen that pops up over this video, and it's going to allow you to enter your email address in 
to get the machine ebook. So basically, after you enter your email and press submit, I'm going to send you a confirmation email that's going to confirm that you have indeed given me the right email address. You'll confirm that email, and then I'll automatically send you over a copy, um, a download link to this machine ebook. It is great, you guys. Um, this is one of probably the only things like it on the internet. It's really high quality, really well written, if I do say so myself, and um, you know it speaks for itself. And that over 10,000 people almost have already downloaded this in about six months. So that's how popular it is. Um, so go ahead and grab your copy of the ebook.